Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones, and we're going to do a video today on a very popular subject. It's in the comments all the time. I get people sending me emails about it saying, I want to get into spray foam, or I'm thinking about getting into this. What do I need to know? What do I need to do? And we're going to address that fairly openly here today. The first assumption that we're going to make is that you're not an already existing spray foam guy. If you're an already existing guy that's working for somebody and you're thinking about uh, going out on your own, you don't need my advice. You already are in the business. Um, so this really applies to people that are coming in cold turkey. They've got absolutely uh, zero knowledge and background. Maybe they're in business already. Uh, hopefully they are. They've got whatever drywall business or something else or HVAC or plumbing or carpentry or whatever. Uh, the first thing that you really need to understand, folks, uh, is that this is a specialty trade and that it should be treated as such. It's no different than electrician or a machinist or a welder. And in all of these trades, uh, even being an HVAC guy, uh, you cannot learn this in one year. You can't learn this in two. It's going to take you at least four years of apprenticing, and it should be apprenticed. When you come into the industry, cold turkey, you don't know anything, you went out, you bought some equipment, you got some foam, bam, wham, bam, you know, you put your shingle out there and you're up and rolling. That's where you start to cause problems for yourself and for your clientele. So I'm going to go over um, why spray foam requires training and expertise and, and what you can expect to see. The first thing is you've really got to get in if you're really seriously looking at spray and foam. You really need to get in. Before you go and buy equipment, you need to go and work with somebody. You, uh, you should be apprenticing. You should be on the tools. You should learn how the equipment is operated. You should learn how the foam is sprayed. And you should have somebody that knows that teaching you. Now, if you are very committed and said, look, uh, there's just nobody around that I can learn from, not one bit, and I'm going to have to fumble around with this, okay, then here we go. The first thing is that you're dealing with equipment. Uh, you're dealing with a truck, you're dealing with a trailer, you're dealing with diesel generators, you're dealing with air compressors, you're dealing with dryers, refrigerant dryers to drill, dry the air, you're dealing with filtration systems. Uh, breathing box systems, OSHA grade, full face, fresh air breathing systems, you should be. Uh, and then you need to have the mechanical aptitude to fix these things, put these things together, take them apart. Now I am not claiming that you need to be a diesel tech and that you need to be able to rebuild and re-sleeve and re-piston the engine, but you do need to be able to understand how diesel engines operate. You need to be able to do basic routine maintenance. You cannot be taking these things to... Um, somebody all the time it's just going to be too expensive to be taking them in for maintenance all the time so you got to be able to do your maintenance i suppose if you're a big enough corporation and you get into foam and you've already got a fleet mechanic no you know so be it but that's not going to be the norm for 98 percent of the people that are out there so you've got to be able to understand how these systems operate uh be able to take them out uh, that means having probably forklift capability at some point. You're going to be needing to load and unload drums as well. Um, if you're doing servicing of equipment, this stuff is big, heavy, bulky. It doesn't lift in or out easily. And so you need to be able to have capacity. You need to have a shop. You need to have a place to store things. You're dealing with a spray pump, right? The spray pump is running off either an air-powered system, an electric-driven motor, or a, a hydraulic system or a combination of their in uh, electrics over hydraulics you're dealing with hydraulic systems high pressure lines high pressure filtration fittings um, expensive expensive sensors and uh, relays and electronics so you I don't expect each person to understand those systems incredibly well but the people that know nothing are the ones that get stopped because of very simple basic problems and when you don't apprentice when you don't get into the industry and start to learn these things very simple very basic things uh, can trip you up and bring you to a complete stop and you're gonna pull your hair out you've got a high pressure spray gun it's got fine delicate parts seals o-rings valves um, fittings inside of it it's got one-way check valves. It's got tiny little ports and orifices that are cleaned out with drill bits. It takes time 
to understand these parts and these components and they're expensive you don't just take your spray gun apart and let the o-rings roll all over the floor and you can't find them you could be putting in hundreds of dollars of o-rings and seals into the guns so you've got to be good at stewarding them the second thing that you need to understand is that it takes quite a bit of time to to get down the spraying technique uh... spraying foam is like welding or painting or playing golf uh, it's a hand-eye coordination it requires some physicality um, not everybody can get it some people plateau fairly quickly there's some people that are naturally gifted toward, towards it and some that are not um, it's going to take many many months upwards of a year to get down proper techniques you've got to be able to rebuild your gun you've got to be able to figure out how to dial in the settings on your pump and your equipment because when you turn temperatures up and down it changes viscosities it changes sprayability uh, you got to understand the chemistry of the systems that you're spraying. You have to understand the environmentals that you're dealing with. Hot, cold, humid, uh, sunshine beating down on one side of the building, shade on the other, uh, working from elevation. And then you've got to be able to have some sort of artistry with this. I mean, anybody can spray horrible looking foam just like anybody can shank their golf shot into the water. But to actually put it where it needs to go takes some skill, takes some dedication, takes some practice. Job management is a huge, huge part of spraying foam. It's time, it's material, it's an order of service. Like, when do we do this? When do we do that? When can we do this? When can we do that? And then quality control, checking that everything is going on, on properly. And that leads us to the big thing of diagnosing and dealing with problems. You don't learn much when everything's going on just fine, right? But the second that uh, you run a drum dry and you got air in the lines or your gun is now clogged up and needs a rebuild or it's ultra humid out today or it's cold out today or it's super hot out today, um, your gun's fingering, it's wet, you got a super hot pattern and you can't get the, the foam cooled down, you can't maintain a pattern, it's too cold. Um, these are the issues. You know, Anybody can spray once it's dialed in. Brand new machine, brand new gun, brand new set of foam never been touched before all the pictures on your website are going to be brand new equipment shiny new gun shiny new truck shiny new trailer great you sprayed some foam it made foam it looked okay on day one now let's see you go out and do it you know six days a week five days a week on a day where it's not good diagnosing the problems diagnosing the frustration diagnosing what's going on and why things change because they don't stay static that's everything that's where all of the technique and all of the experience comes in and then that leads you to the the third big point is just running a business and running the industry why why spray foam at all why be spraying foam with you uh, there's three or four other guys maybe none in your area maybe there's ten guys in your area if you're the 11th guy to the bull why hire you uh, I really caution that you do your homework as to what is the density of spray foam guys in your area I mean uh, for a while there we had we had three guys spraying foam where I am then we had four then we had seven then we had ten then we had twelve we had a home and garden show one year uh, and there was seven spray foam companies in the home and garden show it was ridiculous there wasn't seven of any other thing there wasn't even seven cabinet people there it wasn't even I think seven builders uh, home builders in there so you know anybody that buys a franchise the franchise does a um, an analysis on the market and they take a look at the density and whether or not they can uh, should be putting a, a, a franchisee into that area and you should be doing that too I mean having a Ryan Coke plan um, around the kitchen table with your cousin who's the framer over at such and such a place and says that he can get you all the work at such and such a place because they don't like the guy that they're using is not a business plan okay uh, just because you're ticked off with a couple of guys you've hired in the past that's not a business plan because very quickly within the first year you're gonna run out of buddies and friends and inside deals where they're gonna give you the work and you might not live up to their expectations they may not, may not like you so what are you going to do when you get out there and uh, now you've got to get in the crowd with everybody else and compete with somebody like me and I mean I don't mean to sound arrogant here but the entire reason for this YouTube channel the entire impetus for this was to separate Spray Jones from all the other companies that were giving out nonsensical answers 
and doing horrible workmanship, but they were getting it because they were cheap. If you don't have a business plan, if you don't have a reason to exist, if you don't have an, a market and a niche to fill, then all the reason that there is to spray with you is price. You're just going to be the whore of the industry. You're going to drop your drawers and you're just going to try to fight on price. And that is a miserable existence for everybody, including you. And wait until you've got to do a $10,000 engine rebuild on your generator and you've only been making 10, 20 grand a year at the end of the year. Now, for some people, they've never made that kind of money. So I really caution people that if you're getting into the business, that there has to be a credible reason uh, to do it. Now, I had a couple of people that phoned me up once and they said, well, they're going to be uh, building 27 houses and they want to own their own equipment. And I said, listen, 27 houses really doesn't constitute needing to own equipment. What are you going to do once those houses are done? Okay, so you've got a year's worth of work. Then what? This equipment doesn't sit well. It doesn't resell well. Um, you're competing against a bunch of other guys to get rid of it if you want to flip iron around. So you're going to take a massive hit on the depreciation. So uh, what are you really bringing to the industry? I mean, one or two spray companies can come in and do 27 houses. Uh, the only time that I see that you really need to get into doing the work is if you're doing large amounts of repeatable work and it's too difficult to schedule with other people and you want to get and control the spray foam industry. Like when I got into doing Jones, when I started Jones, I had left wholesale distribution and started Spray Jones because there was nobody in our city at that time. I was first in, um, nobody was spraying foam and you had to go five and a half, six hours away in order to get uh, a, a good company or a company. Now we had a lot of competition come in and, and try to compete but in order to survive, you've got to be able to set yourself aside. You've got to be able to explain things. You've got to be able to talk to people about architecture. You've got to talk to them about improvements. You've got to talk to them about in innovation. Easy for me to say. You've got to innovate in the industry. You've got to come up with new ideas. If you're just going to be another me too out there, spraying foam and fighting on square foot price, it's a miserable existence and it's not enjoyable and it's not going to do anything to move the needle on the industry it's not going to move things forward and you're going to be stuck on a treadmill so profitability and uh, where you fit and what you're bringing to the industry is another huge thing so uh, if you already have an existing business you're a really good concrete guy you're a really good carpentry guy and you're looking to add spray foam i would say this to the closing guys if you stay 12 minutes into the video uh, you really, really need to put your current business on hold and dedicate dedicate what you're doing to the new business. Uh, don't treat it like an orphan uh, or an adoptee. You need to drop everything you're doing and it needs to be your oxygen for the next two years. And you can't go out and hire somebody easily to be your sprayer for you because if they quit, what have you got? And they can lie to you and they can cheat you and they can steal from you and you don't know the equipment and you don't know what's going on so then you've got to drop what you're doing and you've got to be the one spraying the foam you gotta you gotta get out there and spray the foam to learn to know to understand to have deep working knowledge of the equipment and the systems so that if that person is sick or if they quit or if they leave or if they tell you something you know how to handle it and whether or not it's true and that that cannot be learned in six months to a year and it can't be learned at two days a week all right you're just not going to pick the information up uh, giving it part-time dedication. So if you think you can go into this and drop what you're doing and dedicate, I've seen it before, folks. I have seen it before. I've seen framers and roofers and concrete guys and basement guys and drywall guys, and they've all gone and had a rig, and all they end up doing is they'll keep it for two to three years, four years, go through multiple employees, multiple problems, and then eventually sell the equipment for pennies on the dollar. It's just not going to... It's not, it was never their first love. It was never their first calling. It was never their first thing that they understood. It was a sideline thing. Uh, they make life miserable for themselves and for everybody else. And then finally, uh, they're back out. So if you're going to get into foam, you need to view it as a true dedicated trade. You need to learn your trade. You need to get an apprentice. And then you need to get into it full time after you've apprenticed for somebody so that you know what you're getting into. Everything else is just fluff. And you'll come and you'll go and you'll screw a few jobs up maybe you'll do a few jobs right and eventually you'll sell the equipment because the people that do the work that's what makes or breaks you and how you take care of the equipment is the second thing that makes or breaks you and the third thing that makes or breaks you is 
your general understanding of when when you are and aren't making money and if you are and aren't charging enough so there's a lot of things to overcome so it needs to be traded as a full-time trade and if you can do that then yes you can get into it and uh, how you're going to go about acquiring that knowledge is another um, big thing and no don't bother messaging me asking if I'm going to tutor you or teach you in a school because that just isn't happening so 15 minutes that's long enough for me to chat hopefully this gives you some insight into an otherwise question that you would pose uh, in the comment section any of you guys that are spraying foam already drop me uh, a comment I'd like to hear what you have to say and uh, let's help build the industry up thanks bye